this idea that we might sometimes massage the information that we give in order to get the kind of consent that we want. Now, I know that this was a very, very comical and extreme example. Richard, can I pass that question over to you on massaging the pitch? I think it's inevitable. Uh, I think that it's something some people do consciously, uh, but I think it's something that we all do by bringing our own uh, perspectives to a discussion. Yes. The most florid example of this that I can think of was a recent uh, discussion on informed consent at Surgical Grand Rounds where one of the surgeons said it's very simple. I'm informed and they consent. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was just a horrifying uh, perspective on the situation until I thought about it a bit more and realised that whatever information I'm giving to the patient, I'm filtering. Yes. Uh, and I rarely encourage them to bring, uh, to go and do independent research. It's very interesting that, uh, that the kind of approach to informed consent can also be influenced, I think, by the... Um, uh, by the jurisdiction in which you're operating because there are some countries where it is I'm, I'm informed and you consent, it's the doctor knows best. And there are other jurisdictions where um, uh, it's been made very, very clear that it's the jury that will, or a jury that would decide and that there is legal precedent for how one should conduct informed consent processes. Thank you very much for an incredibly uh, stimulating uh, presentation. I happened to have back surgery in the prone position twice, and at neither uh, anaesthetic was I offered the uh, chance, or I wasn't told that the risk of having intra-operative um, visual loss. On the other side, I do a lot of anesthesia for an orthopedic surgeon. A lot of patients are prone. I have never told them that there's a possibility of uh, intraoperative visual loss. What would you do? Let's let's say hands up. Who tells them? Who doesn't? It's interesting. It's interesting. I think this is this is something that we should debate, continue to debate and discuss, and you should continue to discuss at your at your meetings. Excellent point. Thank you very very much. For me, the form of words that I use, uh, and I'd like people to comment on them, is: Do you have any more questions? Yes. As an ending to the process of informing. Because I think the amount of information people need or people want varies greatly from individual to individual. You're then creating an opportunity for the uh, patient to disclose to you what risks are material hmm. to them. And that is also a very important thing. But I would like to open that to the floor. Are there any comments that people would like to make about that? Even if there was a complication where the patient didn't die, it's essentially your word against theirs. So do, do you normally have somebody with you for consent when you're in Australia? Um, no, I guess I, no, I don't, uh, unless there's a relative present. I don't have a nurse in the room during those consent comp uh, conversations. What is the usual convention here in Hong Kong? We, we do have it, witness consent. Isn't and that interesting? Uh, and uh, May I uh, add on that in HA Hospital, they have an audit on the um, using the new forms of the HA informed consent forms. Maybe Libby may have the data as well. It's less than half had the witness. 